Hi, my name is Victoria Lidén and I work as an ESG analyst at Storebrand Asset Management. We have three main strategies and tools in our toolbox when it comes to sustainable investing. The first one being exclusion and what we don't want to invest in. The second one being integration and what we prefer to invest in and allocate more capital towards. And then we also have the last strategy, which is called active ownership. And I'm going to talk a bit about uh, exclusions. At Storebrand, we have something that is called the Storebrand standard, which is the minimum requirement that covers all our investments. And all our investments must ad adhere to these criteria. Uh, this includes both conduct-based criteria, such as uh, excluding companies that violate international norms and conventions, companies involved in gross corruption and economic crime, as well as companies that are involved in severe climate and environmental damage. In addition, we have a zero tolerance for controversial weapons, which includes anti-personal mines, nuclear weapons and cluster munitions. So that's something that we're not investing in. We're also excluding uh, companies involved in tobacco production and distribution. In addition to the store brand standard, we also have additional cr criteria for certain funds and saving profiles. And these criteria include uh, production and distribution of fossil fuels, uh, as well as involvement in alcohol, pornography and gambling. So this exclusion process is highly extensive and we're using both uh, internal research and analysis, which is very uh, in-depth. Uh, we're screening more than 4,000 companies in our investment universe based on these criteria. And we're also using data from external data providers for this screening, which is done each quarter. Hi, my name is Philip Rippen. I work as a portfolio manager for Store One Asset Management. For me, sustainability is about creating value for our clients. ESG correctly applied gives us the ability to make better investment decisions. Now for us, as a starting point, we use the Sustainable Development Goals, which is a framework that basically tells us where the world is headed and what we need to do to fix societal challenges that we all face. And it's also a framework where there is most agreement about these issues at hand. So for us then, it becomes a challenge to find the companies that have products and services that help us achieve these goals. And all other things being equal, we believe that these are companies that are well positioned for the future. For us, we focus on four key themes, renewable energy, smart cities, circular economy and equal opportunities. To us, these represent the areas where we will continue to see growth in the year to come in order for us to solve some of these societal challenges. For me, ESG is about what effect companies have on the world around them and potentially what cost that has for the company if they were to be internalized. So you could say that ESG is relevant for any company, any company in terms of size, any company in terms of sector, because any company or every company has an effect on the world around them. Sustainability, on the other hand, is about the business model of the companies at hand and whether or not they are fit for producing what they produce without taking away from the future generations that will need access to the same product. I'd say there are two main types of customers that we have contact with. We have customers that want to invest sustainably and want to align the way that they invest with the way that they think and the way that often their company strategy is aligned. And for us, that has been an area that we've seen a tremendous amount of growth since the advent of the Paris Agreement. There's also another type of customer which focuses on returns. And what we can see now is an increased focus on wanting to create value from these types of funds. And we think these funds are competitive across strategy. Without saying that all of them will perform well, we believe it gives us an opportunity to perform well if done correctly. For us, it's important to think long term. So if you want to imagine where the world is going to be in 10, 20 or even 50 years time when you might take your pension, what type of companies do you think will affect and be the winners for your long term savings? When it comes to active ownership, we have three main means and methods we can use. We can both engage in a direct dialogue with companies we're invested in, trying to influence them and make them move in a more sustainable direction. Discussing best practice, what kind of risks we have identified for this sector and if there are any specific concerns for this company that we would like to address. For example, if there has occurred an incident, it's more of a reactive dialogue we're having with the company. Otherwise, it's more of a proactive approach where we're trying to identify companies where we believe that they can improve on certain ES&G uh, 
indicators. Uh, we can also join different collaborative initiatives and join forces with other like-minded investors through different investor uh, forums and collaborative initiatives and in that way have a much larger impact and exert our influence uh, in, a, in a better way together with other investors. And lastly we can also use our more formal um, impact and influence as shareholders by using our shareholder right to vote. So for, for example vote at the annual general meeting as well as propose uh, shareholder resolutions. So as I would say that these are the three main strategies that we use when we conduct active ownership. Our approach to active ownership is focusing on generating shareholder value. So we want believe that companies that are proactively addressing sustainability issues will also um, generate uh, a shareholder value for us as investors. We also take a more proactive approach uh, aiming for having a positive impact, so not only acting and engaging with a company once an incident has already occurred, but also proactively trying to address these issues in our dialogue with companies. In addition, we are taking a Nordic approach, which means that we are focusing where we, our ownership is the largest and where we know the companies the best. So the Nordic companies we can engage in a more direct dialogue where we understand what kind of issues they are facing and how they can improve. Whereas abroad and internationally we focus more on um, the formal uh, strategies that we have at hand, for example proxy voting and joining different collaborative initiatives. And that way we can pull our uh, shareholding and exert more influence uh, through our engagement towards those companies. So the world is facing many and uh, severe issues going forward and we're up for a daunting task in order to reach the Paris Agreement. We have biodiversity loss, climate change and several social issues we need to address. In order to do so, I think it's really important to think about your values and what guides you in when you're making investment decisions. So in 2050, the world has agreed that we need to reach net zero greenhouse gas emissions in order to be able to reach the Paris Agreement and limit global warming to 1.5 degrees. It might seem as it's very far away in the future, but there are things that you can do here and now and you can use your long-term savings and invest in a way that aligns with your values.